Hello, all you beautiful people. My name is Peter Levitov. This is Handpan360. And today I want to talk about a rhythm that I absolutely love. It's really simple and easy to learn. It gets you into the groove so that you can explore some improvisation and just flow. So it goes like this. Something like that. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's start with a super quick recap of my notation system. Zero in the center. Next lowest number at my belly button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I have more notes, eight, nine, ten. Dots indicate a ghost note, which is as quiet as you can possibly make it while still touching the hand pan like normal. So that if you were playing quickly, you're still in that motion and you can choose to accent or not. So a ghost note is like this. A T is a talk in the interstitial or shoulder tone. On the notation itself, the top row is the time, then the right hand and the left hand. That will tell you what each hand is doing at any given moment. Each box gets the same exact time. So in this example, we have one and two and three and four and. Whenever you see this zigzag motion, you know that it's alternating hand. So here we have the right hand one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and with this rhythm like all rhythms it's really powerful to learn it with the right hand lead and the left hand lead regardless of your hand dominance and so i'll be demonstrating both and i highly encourage you to do the same because the instrument really is most beautifully expressed when you can balance both sides. It's got notes on each side, so it really helps to be able to approach them and not be limited by your hand dominance. If I'm learning a new rhythm, I oftentimes, before even playing, speak the rhythm, accenting the accents with my voice, and that helps teach my body. So in this case, for the first bar, we would look at one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. and if you find it tricky always slow down the minute that you find yourself not playing the rhythm the way that you hear it slow down because that way you're not teaching yourself bad habits you're teaching yourself what you actually want to achieve one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So to make this more interesting, we're gonna add a bar and we're actually going to take a little bit away. And very often you'll find by taking a little portion away from a rhythm, it's much more interesting and engaging and leaves a lot more room to explore. So in this case, the accent on the two, the second center tone strike, we're going to pull out on the second bar. And so that'll look like this, one and two and three and And so I'll play the whole thing, and this time I'll use the left hand lead. So first bar, one and two and three and four and. Second bar, one and two and three and four and. Two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and. Three and you need to really slow down something like this it's perfectly all right in fact I really like that kind of slow groove leave so much more room okay with any rhythm, there's a gap between when our mind understands a rhythm and then our body understands. And so it's really helpful to just put this on autopilot. Treat it like a meditation. Make sure you're liking all of your tones, that your ding strike is really clean. 
same with your talks, and that your ghosts are quiet. If your ghosts are too loud, you end up without clarity, right? And you don't really get to hear what we're saying, like... When I'm practicing a rhythm, I like to mix it with a more improvisational flow to kind of get that ingraining into the body and also some exploration. So with something like this, we could change the talks to tone fields. Something like... And then maybe a fill. I'm doing a fill on the second bar. We could certainly do it on the first or on both. I'll try a left hand lead and we'll listen to it on both. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. We can also do longer fills. We can start perhaps at the two or at the one of the second bar. Um, let's start at the two and hear what that sounds like with the left hand lead. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and four. We'll start on the one now. I am going to go in more detail on this rhythm in a future video, so hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay updated when that releases. And let me know in the comments what other kinds of things you want to see, both for this rhythm and in general. I'll do my best to get to them. Now, using just simple fills like that where we're only running in the sequential order of the scale, let's look at some subdivisions. So basically, all that a subdivision is, is in a given period of time, we're going to double the amount of notes that we play, perfectly double, um, or triple, or whatever the case may be. In this case, we're going to double. And we'll do that on the second bar, starting at the three. So once we hit the three, we're going to count three E and a, four E and a. And that's going to give us eight notes that we can play. And if I do the right hand lead, we could start here. There's seven notes. I could come back down to the six. Something like. Three E and a, four E and a. Maybe I start at the seven. If you have an eight note instrument, you could play all the way from one to eight. seven and back. With the left hand, we get options to begin on the other side. Three E and a four E and a. And so it's really important that you slow down so that when you subdivide, it's not too fast for you. So it may be that you slow down way We could also just do um, the four E and a on that subdivision, something like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four E and a one and two and three 
four and one and two and three and four e and up. Right? All right, there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed those rhythms and they help you connect with your instrument more and get into some grooves, have some fun. If you like this kind of content, I have a new course that's gonna be released soon. You can go to handpan360.com to get on the list to be notified about that and all future courses. So if you like this notation, you wanna see compositions fully written out for left and right hand, going over everything in just <laughs> absurd detail. <laughs> I really try to leave no stone unturned with what I find is the essential hand pan goodness. All right, thank you for sharing your day with me. Have a beautiful one, onward and upward, and I'll see you in the next video.